Hi and welcome back to the channel. This video is a revisit of my loop on the ground antenna. It's been in the ground now for four years, nine months. It's coming round to autumn here in the UK, and well in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I've noticed it's noisy. The loop on the ground's on noisy. So if I turn this up. So here we are, 80 meters, dipole, IPO1 on the ASU. And uh, you'll see in a second when I switch the loop on the ground in, how noisy it is. See that? And you can sort of see it as well on there. I don't know if it's picking up something that the main antenna isn't, or, or it's gone faulty. So that's, if I go back to the dipole, a clean sound, then loop on the ground. And if I go to top band, same again. Yeah. If I go to 40, it's less on 40. And it's gone quite quiet there, so even with the, uh, if I put the preamp in. So, not such a thing on 40, but definitely. So I'm going to go into the garden and investigate. Right, so if I remember correctly, the connector box is behind that pot. It'll be well buried now. And I think the wire, the 15 feet square, goes around this flower bed uh, and back. So hopefully, uh, all that's still okay. And it might be just a connection issue uh, down here. So I'm gonna have to get on my hands and knees and uh, try, well, try and find it and uh, see how it is. So I can't move this pot, this ace is rooted right through into the ground. Um, I can feel, you might be able to see it down there. Yep, there we go. So there's a connection box, but it's quite tight because I think it literally has one wire going that way and one wire going this way. So I'm gonna, gonna try and free it up somehow and uh, see how it's looking. Uh, and try and see if I can see the connections without disturbing it. Right, I don't know if you can see what I can see, but the the wires are still connected and the I'll just get around there that's still rubber sealed this is the oh that's a, a top band radial that's coax going down to the five eighths so this is the the feed the coax to the loop on the ground that still looks okay so it's going to be a tricky one this one. I'll take the top off, see if there's anything obvious. Uh, and then somehow maybe try and test continuity around the loop. But I'd be surprised if that's if that's broken. So I'll take the top off and have a look inside. Right, so here we are. We've got some water ingress. Some corrosion on those connections. Um, I think the water might have got in through this rubber gasket. Um, so I might put some some grease on that, um, and I'm going to test continuity. So to see whether this is still working, and I'll mop this this water out. But well, it's it's nearly five years old, so. It's allowed a bit of aging. Right, so I've cleaned out all the water and the moisture. Uh, I've unplugged the coax from the rig because I'm about to do a continuity test. Um, not that these are connected, bear with me. So if you remember from the original build, uh, there's a number of turns around this side of the ferrite and a number of turns around this side of the ferrite, so they're not they're not physically connected these wires, so that is either under that wire and that's either under that wire. So I would never get continuity between those. Um, but I've checked the coax um, and that's showing no continuity, um, which isn't the be all and end all, but hopefully that means that's okay. 
Uh, now, the telling point is when I connect that to there, I'm getting no continuity. No. That, now earlier, I just tested that without holding the camera in place and I wasn't getting continuity, now I am. So they're looking at the state of those bolts. They must be zinc and not stainless because they've corroded. There, see what I mean? So I'm scraping away here like a good one. Oh, there, I've got continuity. There, oh, again, again. So I know I'm scraping through some of the corrosion. So on the bolt ends, nothing. And I can rub that. But if I catch, if I catch the end of the fork connectors, the ring connectors, that's when I'm getting um, a reading. So, apologies, I'm doing this one-handed there. So I suspect that's just a lucky connection and I'm reading that wire. Apologies, that isn't in focus. I suspect they're not actually connected to the actual loop wire. Um, so I'm going to have to take this out and sort it down. This, uh, it's not right. Uh, hopefully the coax is fine. It's this end that's the problem by the looks of it. Um, so I'm going to have to wrestle this box out somehow and disconnect it. Right, uh, I went for broke and I moved the tree. Um, it was rooted just a little bit. Uh, right, so here we are. You can see what's going on now. So the moisture's got to that SO239. Although the liquid rubber's still there, these have corroded. These were obviously not stainless. Um, and uh, yeah, so take the whole box out and uh, well, see what I can uh, rescue and what uh, what needs redoing. Well, a lot of it by the looks of it. Right, so I've had to cut the uh, the loop off. These were just corroded solid. Um, so I've bared off. Uh, where are we? I've bared off the, both ends. Um, so I just pan around here. So I'm hoping I've still got continuity on the loop, so the wire isn't broken. Just check that's working. Yeah, right. So. That one and that one, that one and that one, yep, so we've got a continuity, so, yeah, there you go, so that's off, and then I'm going to touch it on the way in again. Right, so I've still got a loop, that's a, a start. So I need to get this plug off as well, I've just made a slice through the self-amalgamating tape. looking okay. No, oh, no, there. Right, so we've got moisture on this side of the, the plug as well. I we can see that there. Um, right, I might just cut this coax and uh, I've got enough slack to put another plug on. Um, with some outdoor soldering. Right, so I might do that now. Well is dead and and well dead, and I think uh, I think that belongs to the latter. Obviously the transformer's fine. I just need to change everything else uh, and learn from the experience, which is what amateur radio is about. So a new box, new connections, and uh, recover that transformer. Right, so here we are back in the shack, uh, as well as fixing the connection box itself what I can do as well is just test that coax um, I've, uh, I've got an unterminated end I cut the plug off uh, it's RG58 which is fine on these low frequencies uh, even though I'm not transmitting on a loop on the ground clearly you can't um, it still makes uh, a difference on receive in terms of loss uh, of signal so this MFJ will do a return uh, a distance to fault measurement as I'm sure VNA as well as, as well. So if I press, go into advanced mode, uh, D 
distance of fault in feet. So using the uh, the frequency buttons just below out of shot, I'm looking for the uh, X uh, for zero on the first read. I've got to find the lowest frequency. Uh, so if I uh, right, so it's above there. I've run out of band, so go up a bit. I run out of band again. Um, so this should be down from here. So I'm looking for zero for the first reading. Or as close to zero as I can get. You have to take two readings and then I press uh, gate. That's number one. Second reading, I find the next highest frequency. So uh, I'll go upper band. I need to go up from there. So here we go. So I'm looking for x equals zero, or as close to zero as I can get. Well, one's close enough, I think. Oh, oh I saw zero then. Uh, and then we press gate again. So when we got, oh, yeah, that's close enough, isn't it? There. So distance to fault is a hundred and six point one feet times velocity factor. Well, this um, coax is 66% uh, velocity factor. So if I type 106.1 times by 0.66, so it's 70 feet to fault, uh, which is about 21 meters. So coax out the shack, down the wall, down the garden, 70 feet, 21 feet is feels about right. So um yeah i'm i'm happy with that that coax is okay uh, while we're here though uh, it's it's something i can show you uh coax loss uh, on frequency so if i just reboot this go back into normal mode uh, da, 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 da. so there so the, right down the bottom near near top band frequency uh and coax loss so on this runner coax which we know is uh, 21 meters 70 feet sort of virtually no loss well no loss on, on top band uh, we go up to um, 80 meters which is around there uh, 0.6 db and so on so if i click up the band 21 megahertz one and a half db and so on uh, six meters 50 megahertz two and a half db never go up to uh, two meters Around about there, 4.3 dB and so on, and that's that's a lot of loss. Uh, so it just shows you can uh, do some good tests with uh, your trusty MFG, lots more than this, but looks like the, the coax is fine anyway. So here we are, new box, smaller box. Uh, I've got stainless fittings on this end, a liberal amount of liquid rubber. It's uh, it's very difficult to apply meat, uh, but it's not meant to be pretty, is it? It's uh, meant to be functional. Um, the ring connectors aren't stainless, but there's not much I can do about that. And I need to connect ring connectors on this end on the loop wire itself. Um, so hopefully that should last, well, hopefully at least another five years. And uh, time to refit it, get it attached to the loop and uh, see how it works. And what I forgot to say was, if you want to build a loop on the ground and you want to know how all this works and the different options that you've got, at the end of this video I'll put a link to the first of the original series of four videos where I build this box uh, and test it. Um, and like me, don't be put off by the, uh, the initial test results because there's a good ending uh, in episode four. So here we are all finished outside i think i've just realized i do more soldering outdoors than i do indoors um, so we've got the uh, ring connectors of the loop attached uh, and liquid rubbered uh, and similarly the pl259 compression fitting with self amalgamating tape and uh, liquid rubber uh, there and there where it goes into the box um, it's it's good stuff but it's, it's really messy to work with you can see by my hands i was trying to eke out the end of this pot um, so I've been applying it with a screwdriver. Um, it's uh, it's it's good stuff, but it's like I say, it's messy. You end up touching things you weren't expecting. So that's all done, uh, and uh, hopefully that's the loop on the ground sorted for another 
another five years. Is that for your four? Turn down a bit. Eighty meters. So that's the dipole. Up on the ground. <laughs> Still there. After all that. Uh, Well, that's another project to find out what that is. Top band, loop on the ground. This is the quad wave vertical now. Loop on the ground. Joy. Uh, off centre fed on 40. Loop on the ground. And it wasn't affecting that before anyway. Uh, right so well it was definitely needed doing <laughs> whether this goes away on its own uh, is another thing um, right i'm gonna have to have a think anyway that that was a possibly an unnecessary refurb with the loop on the ground although it was on its last legs as you saw uh yeah thanks for watching fingers crossed well it just goes to show not every every project's a success anyway if you like the video uh, the channel's all about operating and simple projects Please like and subscribe, hit the bell and you'll be notified of new videos when they're released. Tip 3.